your social studies or other class teacher may ask you sometime to conduct a piece of sequence writing. And that means any type of writing in which you must arrange information in sequence. That could be process writing, cause and effect writing, or any type of writing where information is presented sequentially. First, next, last, and so on. Let's take a look at how to improve your writing in such a paragraph. First, let's look at the writing task. Your teacher may ask you to explain numerous steps of a process. Your teacher may ask you to explain different ways that somebody might use something. They might ask you to explain different impacts that a given historical event may have. Regardless of whether you're enumerating steps, ways, or impacts, this is sequence writing. It asks you to arrange information sequentially in a step-by-step -step process, first, next, last, and so on. And you can practice some fairly clear strategies for writing an effective paragraph in sequence writing. Let's take a look at a student example. This is an actual student answer from a 7th grade social studies class. There are four steps to use the internet for research in social studies class. That's a fairly clear topic sentence. And the next sentence adds to that clarity. The first step is to use search terms. When you search, only use the important words and do not type the whole question in. Despite the fact that this is a run-on sentence, it seems fairly clear, and that clarity continues. The second step is to use reliable resources when you look for information like .gov, .edu, and .org. Don't use answer.com or wiki answers. The clarity continues, and this writer is doing a fairly decent job of presenting information. However, she's practicing some poor strategies in writing that could actually lead her to some confusing writing with another task, or possibly later in this paragraph. That poor sequence writing strategy comes from these. Weak subjects and weak verbs in sentences two and three. The first step is and the second step is. Now while you look at those and you may think those are excellent ways to introduce different steps of a process, those are actually examples of very unclear and weak writing. Let's take a look at them by themselves. The first step is to use search terms when you search, only use important words, and do not type the whole question in. The second step is to use reliable resources when you look for information like .gov, .edu, and .org. These two sentences suffer from the same problem. The first is a weak subject. Step is the subject of your sentence. Now the focus of this paragraph is research, and specifically the researcher. And the author is actually talking to the reader about when they conduct research. Therefore, the most important noun or subject of any sentence in this paragraph is the you, the reader, the researcher. This author is giving instructions on how the researcher should do something, so the researcher is the most important thing in this paragraph. That researcher should be the subject of sentences, not the word step, whether first or second. The second problem is a weak verb. Is is the weak verb in the English language, and some students can't even find it as a verb in sentences, it is so weak. This is a process, step by step, of different actions. And instead of enumerating actions through clear verbs, the author is using the verb is. This is weak writing. So how do we revise it? We can look at transition words and phrases. The first step indicates a need on the author's part to include some sort of transition, first, second, and so on. Then why not just use the word first? The word first is a very clear transition word, and it can give the information about the first step of the process and then get out of the way for a clear subject and a clear verb. So a sentence like this, the first step is to use search terms when you search, only use the important words and do not type the whole question in becomes, first, use search terms. The subject here is the understood you, and the verb is use. Both of these are much clearer than the first step is. The understood you indicates the researcher, the reader, and use tells you what they're doing. They're using search terms. Therefore, this sentence clearly indicates the person who's acting and the action that they're doing. The first step is did not. This makes for much clearer writing. The second step is to use reliable resources and so on becomes second use reliable resources when you look for information like .gov and so on. These revisions lead to clear subjects and clear verbs and remember by clear subjects and clear verbs I do not mean any sort of sophisticated highbrow sort of writing. I'm looking for something very clear. Words like you and use 
indicate the person under discussion and the action that they're doing. Now this writer knew that. If you look later in the paragraph, this writer slips into that second person command voice. Don't use answers.com or wikiAnswers next. When you type, use your own words and do not copy and paste from other websites. Finally, you cite your source by creating a link and so on. Next, finally, and later on the word then. Indicate good use of transition words, leading to strong subjects and strong verbs. Verbs like type, cite, use, link, copy, paste. These are excellent verbs, and the understood you is a clear subject, because the author is talking to the reader as a researcher. The second half of this paragraph is clear sequence writing. The first half is not, and quick revisions can make that first half fall into line with the second. Let's take a look at another student answer. Primary sources are key to helping historians describe historical events and issues from the perspective of people living at the same time. Clear enough? It's a paragraph about primary sources. The second sentence is where we see weak sequence writing starting to get the author in a bind. Look at the subject. My first explanation of how primary sources allow historians to describe the time period's perspective. That's all one subject. And there's your verb, is. My first explanation of how primary sources allow historians to describe the time period's perspective is. They use the evidence from that time period to make a, a conclusion. The rest of that sentence, they use the evidence from that time period to make a conclusion, seems clear. The first portion of the sentence is overly wordy, complicated, and rests upon the weak verb of is. The author continues this structure, my second explanation is, and my last explanation is. The revision strategies that we just practiced with the previous student answer can help here. And we want to eliminate, of course, explanation is, because explanation is a weak verb. It's what the author is doing, not what the subject of the paragraph is. And of course, is, being the weakest verb in English, must go. Let's use some transition words and phrases. Instead of my first explanation, we get first. My first explanation of how primary sources allow historians to describe the time period's perspective is, can benefit from the use of the simple transition word first. So what subject do we use? We want to avoid the first-person voice because the author does not need to be the subject of this writing. So if we don't use I, then what should we use? You must think about what are the primary nouns, the primary people, groups, organizations, or things in your paragraph. And we could come up with two answers for a strong subject, primary sources or historians. Primary sources seemed more central to this student's writing, so let's take a look at a revision around primary sources. First, primary sources allow historians to describe the time period's perspective. They use the evidence from that time period to make a conclusion. I included the ellipse because the transition between this new revision and the rest of the sentence material seems rather unclear. So let's use historians instead. First, historians use primary sources so they can use the evidence from that time period to make a conclusion. That seems much clearer. Historian seems to be the good subject for our sentences. Strong, clear, specific, and the sentences building upon historians as the subject will work. And of course, we see the verb use, which is much better than is. Taking a look at another student answer, we can practice the same revision. Understanding individual and group perspectives is essential to analyzing year-round school, a fairly clear topic sentence. The individual perspectives on understanding year-round school is, we see the same problem, and later on the author uses the same structure, group perspectives is. Both of these sentences, sentences two and four, suffer from a strong lack of clarity. Even though the author seems to be including the important pieces of information, the important subjects and verbs are not present. Perspectives and is just will not work. So let's revise. Remember that we want to use a strong subject. We learned that with the last paragraph, using historians as our subject. The subject right now is individual perspective. So perspective is the subject and individual just modifies it. How about individual perspective becoming individuals? Okay. And if we've lost perspective, then where does that go? Aha, it can be our verb. If we lose a powerful word like perspective, then perspective could be the verb. Now, of course, you wouldn't say that individuals perspective or perspect or perspectivize. 
so we'll need something else to work. The sentence, the individual perspectives on understanding year-round school is, becomes, individuals believe that year-round school helps kids learn more. A much clearer sentence, straighter to the point, still capturing the important information, but reading smoothly, conversationally, while still being sophisticated in its understanding of the content matter. Individuals believe, a strong sentence to be sure. Let's review. If you want to write effective sequence writing, you should use transition words and phrases. Simple ones, first, next, finally, then, and so on. You should use strong subjects. Strong subjects that depict what you're talking about. Individuals, historians, primary sources, or even you. Lastly, use strong verbs. Verbs like use, cite, believe. These strong verbs will indicate what action you're talking about in the paragraph. If you can do this, use transition words and phrases, use strong subjects and strong verbs, then you can write paragraphs that are not wordy, awkward, rambling, or confusing even to you. They'll be clear to the point, you'll be able to speak them out loud, and at the same time, you will have mastered the content material.